So poroelasticity involves coupling of fluid flow and this deformation of a porous solid. But there are other classes of problems where fluid flow is coupled to solid deformation. And we can imagine this really in a variety of cases where there's some kind of a uh, structure, some kind of a, a non-porous solid structure that is in a flow and the flow um, acts on the structure to deform it. So there is a classic problem that illustrates how this works and here's the setup for that problem. Um, this is this problem in original form is in the model library. Um, I've taken it and modified it somewhat. So the basic setup here is that this is a, uh, a tube and there's flow from left to right and this is an obstruction that's sticking up in the flow and it is a um, it's a barrier so when the flow comes through here the flow lines get pushed up around uh, the pressure builds up and there's pressure that's pushing on this, uh, this little piece that's sticking up and that bends it over. And this is called a fully coupled problem because the flow causes the, uh, this piece to deform, but the deformation is enough so that the geometry of the flow problem changes and that affects the pattern of the flow. So just like in the fully coupled poor elastic problem, the deformation of the solid affects the flow and the flow affects the deformation. Okay, so uh, what we have to do is analyze the solid as an elastic piece and then we analyze the fluid flow using the methods that we've seen already uh, and these two um, physics are coupled together. So there's an interface that's already set up to do this and we'll make use of that interface. It's the fluid structure interaction interface. But before we get to that, let's go and take a look at how this model is set up. We're here on the geometry, so I mean, clearly we've got a rectangle here. This is a rectangle. The little piece is a rectangle. One thing that we may not have seen, though, is this little curved piece. This is a fillet. And so if I just run the geometry up to this point it's a squared off rectangle but if I use this fillet command and select these two points it rounds off the end and we do that um, for the meshing we'll get a better mesh right here um, at the end if we don't have those sharp corners so that's how to build the geometry and let's see under variables I have a variable called flow in and it's this um, uh, term you mean, which is uh, in, up in the global definitions. And then this shows the distribution of the mean flow. And it's, um, it gives a, a parabolic distribution, uh, but for some reason, this definition works better than the built-in parabolic distribution. So we'll stick with this. H is also a global definition. Let's see, as it turns out, H here is used in the definition of the rectangles um, right there. So H is this dimension right there. OK, so that's defined. This is the inlet velocity. And this is the um, that's the the mean inlet velocity and then this is the um, well I guess this is yeah this term here is the inlet is the just a constant velocity uh, at the inlet and then this causes it to change as a function of time and it'll ramp up and then reach a maximum and then drop back down okay so that's a fairly straightforward setup. Then here um, in fluid structure interaction, this has combinations of the um, 
of the elastic analysis as well as combinations of fluid flow. So um, we have to define fluid properties and up here in materials this has got um, two materials where we just use a basic definition and specify the properties here. So these are the properties of water um, and this is the definition of the material properties of the little piece that's sticking up here. And it has kind of an unusual set of properties in this example. That's the density of steel and that's a reasonable Poisson's ratio for steel. But this modulus here 2e to the fifth pascals. If you remember, the modulus of um, rock is about 10 to the ninth to 10 to the tenth pascals, and uh, soft clay would be 10 to the seventh. Um, and so this is much softer yet. So um, this is a very, a very um, deformable piece. Maybe it's like a piece of soft rubber, something like that, um, with a high density. So anyway, the, actually the, the, the thing that really matters here is the modulus. And we will we'll experiment around with that a little bit. Um, and so let's see, the fluid properties, let's go back to here, the um, free definition or deformation this whole region here we're going to define uh, as free deformation while this is the default and uh, prescribed mesh displacement and the prescribed displacement is zero for all of the boundaries except right here the piece that's going to move. Um, everything's been overridden this is also a default and we have to define the boundary that's going to be um, the boundary between the fluid and the solid. So that's this boundary right here. And the material that's the elastic material is defined right here. And what I did, instead of using this material here, I changed it and just specified these properties. And so as you can see, I've changed the modulus and made it a little bit softer. Um, then it was specified up here. And initial va values, that's all just the default. And so here's where the fluid comes in, and we're using this flow in terms. And then the fluid leaves here with a pressure, no viscous stress outlet. And remember, for the mechanical analyses, we have to have a fixed constraint boundary condition. And so we use that in, uh, right here, and we fix the the boundary right here at the base of this moving piece. Uh, the mesh here is a the default mesh and what you get is a uniform mesh except right here around the tip of this piece that, that is curved and we automatically get a finer mesh there. And then the um, that's pretty much the setup. So I ran it, and here's the, here's the result. Um, so we'll start back here. And so this is... Yeah, it's actually not going all the way back to zero, I guess because I, I didn't use all of the um, all of the frames. So this is uh, 0.1 second in and let's well let's see. I'm gonna I wanna I wanna see what this thing looks like right at the beginning. So I'm gonna go back here and start it at zero. So there's what it looks like and it's just sticking straight up and we've got some some colors here but that's see it's 10 to the minus 36 so this is essentially all zero and so we let it advance to that one tenth of a second and what we get then is that here's this uh, flow going through here 
Uh, we've got low flow along the walls like we've seen before. This thing that's sticking up uh, concentrates the flow and so we're seeing the velocity here increased and the flow lines going around it. And we've got a little eddy downstream from this piece uh, and you can see that we're already starting to get some bending. The uh, von Mises stresses are shown here in these colors, this color screen, scheme green to red, and so they're shown right here. You can see the stresses build up as this thing bends. And we advance it further in time, and you can see here that um, it's bending over, a lot of stress right here, and we get this uh, vortex that is forming behind this uh, bending piece. And so the velocity is increasing, and this thing reaches a reaches a maximum bend at about about 0.2 seconds, and it's a pulse of fluid that's coming through, and so this thing re rebounds after the velocity decreases, but then the velocity stays it it drops off to a steady rate, and so. This thing is bent over at this rate um, th that is affected by this lower velocity, but still enough velocity to, to deflect it. Okay, and if we look at this with the player, it looks like that. Okay, so that's actually, I, you know, I think that's kind of cool. We can see what amounts to really quite a large deformation that's caused by this flow. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is set this up on your own. So what I'm going to want to do is have you start with a, um, a file that I've modified and uh, taken some of the material out. And so you'll build the model, but you'll start with some of the setup. and. That's, that uh, file will be attached and I'll show you how to set it up using another video. So uh, this video will end and you should start up another one.